In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Solar Edge Energy Bank. This is a 10 kilowatt hour battery with a 94% round trip efficiency and a 10 year unlimited cycle warranty where the capacity at that time is guaranteed to be at least 70%. So we're going to look at why I chose this battery, compatibility with inverters, delivery performance, documentation, installation, configuration options, and also general initial performance uh, impressions. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos, my name is Anthony and I own a nine kilowatt solar panel array up here in Aberdeenshire. There are plenty of videos where I've discussed the performance of that, but in this video, I'm going to be concentrating almost exclusively on this solar edge battery. But before we get into the details of this battery in particular, let's take a brief recap as to why I chose to install a battery in the first place. In my previous videos, I determined that a 10 kilowatt hour battery would offer the best balance for return on my investment. Back in December 2021, the estimated return would be approximately 500 pounds per year, and that would accrue up to 8,000 pounds after 10 years, assuming 6% electricity price inflation. That was when electricity prices were running at just under 25 pence per kilowatt hour during the day and 5 pence per kilowatt hour during the night. Coming into this winter, quotes from Octopus Go are so far much higher. That increases first year returns from 500 pounds to well over 900 pounds. So what is this really? Is it an investment product or is it something else? Well, in my opinion, this is an insurance product. In the long term, I don't know how electricity prices are going to turn out. They could turn out to become very cheap or these high electricity prices could be the start of a long ongoing dystopian nightmare where there's a huge amount of energy poverty in our country. If you go back to my very first videos which I made in 2020 about my solar panels, I made a prediction back then that the price of electricity would go down as more people invested in renewable energy. Now it turns out I was completely wrong. But the consequence of that incorrect prediction was that the solar panels have actually protected me from the very worst effects of these price rises. And this battery is going to reinforce that protection even more. But why did I choose a solar edge battery? Why didn't I choose another brand such as Pylon Tech or Give Energy? In the United Kingdom, you need to gain approval from the energy network provider, also known as a DNO, before you can connect more than 16 amps of generation capacity to the grid. Now, if I wanted to have an AC coupled battery, I'd need to uh, have another inverter procured and mounted, and that would require a separate approvals process. And the outcome of that approvals process would be uncertain. So to avoid going through that approvals process all over again, we can use the existing HD wave inverter and connect a battery on the DC side of that inverter. Now, in the case of uh, Solar Edge, there are only two brands of battery which are compatible, one of which is the Solar Edge Energy Bank. And it means we can connect the battery directly to the MC4 connectors, which are spare on this particular inverter. That is going to dramatically simplify the installation process. Additionally, when you connect the battery to the same inverter as solar panels, you don't get round trip inefficiencies when you are converting from DC to AC and then back to DC again, as would be the case if you had a second inverter for your batteries. That improves the round trip efficiency to over 94%. As I discovered later, there are some problems with this battery. This has been mounted here in my kitchen for three months, but it has not been wired up and it's not been commissioned. When I accepted the quote, the data sheet said that the battery was compatible with Solar Edge HD Wave inverters pending a firmware update. That firmware update came according to a technical note, but the advice that my electrician received was that the technical note was only applicable for smaller inverters. 
the larger inverters were due to get another in update later. So three months after I accepted the quote, um, we came to May and uh, they received stock in the warehouse and I was asked, do I want to accept delivery of this battery? And I decided to accept the delivery of the battery right there simply because the next batch of deliveries wasn't due until September. And I reckoned that the firmware update would be available before then. So I took a gamble. I also wanted to secure the prices for batteries back then, as opposed to the inevitable price rises, which seem to be infecting every single supply chain right now. So beginning of August, I found that there was a new firmware uh, update for my inverter. And I inquired with Solar Edge about that firmware update and it turns out that it is now indeed supported. So eight kilowatt and 10 kilowatt inverters are now supporting the operation and interface of the Solar Edge Energy Bank battery. So all of these issues that I've had are now a historical matter, but that said, issues with delivery and availability of stock are still ongoing. Last time I checked, next available stock at some wholesalers was December. So if you're going to make a decision to invest in a battery, make a decision early and plan many months into the future. Now, some literature in Solar Edge's website suggests that the hot water controller is not compatible with RS-485 serial communications to the energy bank. When you conflate this statement in this document with the diagram showing RS-485 serial communications to the battery, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the energy bank is incompatible with this hot water controller. But by using RS-485 serial communications to the battery, you'll find that the hot water controller and the solar edge energy bank are indeed compatible. The incompatibility only arises if you use the wireless communications module in the energy bank to communicate with a new energy net communications module in the solar edge inverter. You cannot use energy net and Zigbee wireless communications in the same inverter. So let's go and take a look and see what it takes to install this new battery. So first up today is uh, the floor mounted bracket. So it comes in quite nice uh, packaging actually. It's uh, looking pretty decent. And uh, then we've also got uh, the, uh, the main cover for the, for the battery. That goes on last, I guess, after all the wiring's done. So this is the floor mounted bracket for the battery. Um, now you can secure it against the wall. Um, now this is a hollow plasterboard wall. So there isn't any load put against the wall. All of the load is transmitted to the floor. There are optional brackets that allow you to uh, secure this against the floor. But in my opinion, um, the wall bracket should eliminate any lateral loads if you were to uh, pull on it, for example. It is a heavy battery that's about to go on here after all. So this is the uh, main star of the show. It's um, got these uh, handles which screw on. It's 120 kilos. Um, and it's also got this uh, soft piece here so that the flange doesn't uh, cause damage to your floor whilst you're handling it. So here's the uh, battery mounted onto the bracket. Um, it literally just, you've got these hooks here and they just simply uh, hook, uh, you just simply lift the battery up and uh, hook it onto here. So the handles which lifted it into place go into these uh, screws here. They're removable, they're optional and extra. They cost about 60 quid for a set of four, but I'm not getting charged for these because Barry has got about six more customers who have placed orders for these batteries, but I'm the first one to get these fitted. Into here, we have got a fire extinguisher and it's an automatic fire extinguisher, which I think is gonna be thermally triggered. Okay, so here we are. It's uh, now in its final mounting position. I have to say, I think it looks uh, pretty decent. Um, it's certainly utilitarian in terms of appearance, but then again, so is a fridge freezer. And I think this uh, uh, suits a kitchen perfectly well. Um, it does look a lot bigger than what 
I imagined it to be. The specifications uh, said it was about 230 mil deep, but one of the things you can see is that the bracket here, this is the bracket that would ordinarily be on the wall. So that's offset from the wall. So it's actually quite a bit deeper um, than uh, what I had in my mind. But nonetheless, it still looks pretty decent. So today's the day. The electrician will be coming along later on to pull the wiring and get the commissioning done. So I've prepared for him by lifting the floor hatches so he's got easy access underneath the floors. Not many cables needed. Six square millimeter power cables, earth and cat six ethernet cable is all we need to connect the battery bank to the inverter. So here we've got uh, the main trunking cable coming up and then we've got the two DC cables which have been added and then we've got a serial comms line and then we've got the earth. And that serial comms line goes onto this connector. This connector has got an existing serial comms going to the uh, metering, Modbus metering. And we've had nightmare after nightmare with this. Um, first of all, we had a, uh, we lost Modbus communications uh, to the uh, uh, meter, um, and then he tried some dip switches, and then we got three LED lights lit up here quite dimly, just for comparison. That's a bright LED light. This is a dim one. He's been on the uh, phone to. Solar Edge support for about an hour, and they're suggesting now that we just leave this uh, unplugged with no power for 15 minutes. So that is the situation. Um, but I think I wanted to just uh, use this as an example to say, when it comes to the installation manuals, they're actually quite poor. In fact, the documentation is both very detailed, but also very poor in many other respects. So for example, um, when it comes to RS-485 comms, uh, you've got two dip switches here and they need to be set, um, one for the left-hand side, one for the right-hand side. Um, and there's no description in the uh, manual uh, to say that you need to set the uh, dip switches for the uh, metering to the battery. So overall, I'm hoping this will be resolved. Otherwise, it could be uh, a replacement communications board. Okay, so my installer has closed up the uh, outside panel. I just want to show you um, what he's done or what you can't see. So I was expecting cables to be mounted, uh, transiting into the wall for a panel. He's managed to drill a hole through the skirting board and you can't see the cables at all and I think that's uh, very neat indeed so I'm very pleased with that things I'm not so happy about though panel gaps I'm not I'm not a big fan of that I've looked into that same again over here there's a little notch just down there you can push that in do that you let go pops out again um, I think that's a design issue that they need to sort out. Here I am at the end of the day. The electrician has gone home. The inverter is working, but uh, the communications is uh, not working. So this is the bit where I take my script and I just put it away for the time being. You've got three LED lights, red, green, blue. They're lit, but they're dimly lit. I've got no communications on my monitoring platform, but I do have uh, monitoring of my inverter using the My Energy app, which has a separate uh, CT clamp. This was not how I expected today uh, to end up. Um, I had all sorts of uh, things in my script related to performance, maximum demand, uh, settings on the My Energy Zappy charger, and I'm hoping there's going to be a part two to this before too long. My feeling is that they're probably going to diagnose uh, a replacement uh, communications board. I don't know how many spares they've got uh, 
to uh, dish out. I'm hoping the answer is two days from now, but I've got a feeling the answer will be uh, several months from now. Uh, I think that, that there are an awful lot of things I was going to rant about with Solar Edge um, that I decided to delete from my script, but I'm going to rant about it now anyway. When I accepted the quote in January, um, I had done my own research. I had uh, found out and confirmed that uh, the energy bank was compatible with the HD wave inverter pending a new firmware release. And sure enough, um, there was through cross-referencing on the data sheets, you could found, find a document which referred to a firmware version, which I think was 4.14. Well, 4.16.9 is what I've got here, and that's the first firm, firmware version that's actually uh, supported. There was no information about what inverters were supported uh, by the energy bank and which ones were not. It was only three months later after I accepted the quote that the wholesaler told my installer, and that was when I also cross-referenced that uh, statement with uh, Solar Edge support. Their documentation is, is, is not great in that regard. The installation manual here cannot be followed fully. Um, you need to have a separate document uh, which describes the configuration of the RS-485 cable and then you follow it and communications still don't work. And that's the situation we were in um, before. We were working towards um, uh, solving that. Uh, and then he tried it setting a dip switch and then he powered it back on. And then we got this situation. I've got a feeling this is, this is tragic. Hopefully, uh, the photograph that he sends to Solar Edge support will come back with uh, a, a much simpler and straightforward answer where you can just simply uh, change something and then it will spring back to life. I hope that's the answer, but um, I've got a feeling it won't be. So in the meantime, I hope I'll have a follow-up video for you in a matter of days or weeks rather than months. Uh, but uh, there's going to be some more videos coming up, uh, another Tesla road trip, uh, a review about Teslas. I also want to talk about uh, the uh, impact of energy prices on myself and how this energy bank was supposed to help out. That's all going to wait, but uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.